we're talking, you know, see how we can make it happen. You know, some of this presentation, this isn't, uh, I said presenting to angel investors, and it sounds like uh, something, geez, not too many people do, but um, to some variety of uh, capital investment or not, this is, this is a presentation really about about money and how people start companies and how they get money to do it. And angel investors is kind of focused on the end here. Uh, I just have to walk over and press this every once in a while. But so this is this slide just shows you how many how much money people use to start their business. And you can see that like only eleven percent of them use more than a uh, hundred thousand dollars and really this big amount, 61%, is less than $10,000 to start their company. And um, the world has kind of changed. A lot of it, you know, there used to be big venture capitalists, and, you know, you could get hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. You can still do that, but it's not, <laughs> doesn't happen very often in Indiana. In Silicon Valley, it happens more often, but still not that often. Most people start with lower amounts. You know, you start small. You get some traction, you get going, and that's how people like to give money anymore to see if you can do it. Uh, so just who are angel investors? They're people that uh, invest in early startup companies a lot of times. Uh, people that are venture capitalists, for example, are people that in typically invest in later stage. So you've been going for 10 years, you're successful, you know, you're making five million a year and now you want to make 20 million a year but you need capital to do that and so venture capitalists will invest in that but angel investors are also people who uh, invest their time because they want to be involved in what you do so they want to keep involved and they have business knowledge they can help mentor you they might serve on your board things like that um, and so angel investors tend to be a little bit closer to you Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad because you feel they're getting in your business. But, but you know, if if you want if you want their money, a lot of times you have to take their help, whether you want it or not. Um, and often, people who are angel investors were people who were entrepreneurs themselves, or obviously they've got money, right? So they tend to have uh, uh, an accreditation, accredited. Investors by the SEC definition are over a million in net worth and, and a lot of other things. So they've got money, otherwise they wouldn't be there uh, uh, to have it. Um, and they also tend to invest in local companies. And this is kind of a, a definition of most investors anymore. You know, they like to be close to who they give money to because they like to, um, as I said, watch them, be a part of it. So if, you know, if you're looking for money, it's going to be a lot easier to get it from people in Indiana if we're here than people on the West Coast. People on the West Coast or East Coast or, or not, people that aren't here are less likely to invest in somebody here, uh, just as a general rule. Uh, so there's really, there's more, a lot more types of investors, and I'll show you on the next slide. Uh, really the kinds of investors and the kind of money they give out. But we always say that the, the first round of investment or where you should look for money in the first place is yourself, right? Okay, what do I have? And a lot of times you look at your bank account and say, well, I've got hardly enough to make next month's you know, house payment or rent payment or whatever. And that's like 90% of the people that come into the innovation center or like that, you know, it's like, well, I don't have any money. I mean, that's, I got this idea, I don't have any money. So, um, but a lot of times there's other sources of income or sources of, of yourself that you might have not have thought of. Um, like, okay, you, if you own a house, maybe you could use that. It's pretty risky, right? So you always got to look at the risk and uh, of what kind of assets you have and whether you're willing to risk it all. Some people are. Um, but really the next round after that, Call the three Fs, friends, family, and fools, <laughs> to people that you can convince that you know to invest in you. And usually these are people um, 
maybe you can get ten thousand dollars out of you know five friends, two thousand apiece. And as we all know, that's not easy. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many people in my family would give me two thousand apiece. You know, but uh, it depends on your family. It depends on what you need. But you know, that's like the next round. Angels are really. There's a lot of other things inside of here that that I'll show you in a bit. But angels really might give. 50, 100, 200, maybe up to 5,000 or $500,000. Um, and a lot of times they work in, they, they go in packs, you know, angel uh, investor groups. So maybe each angel might put in uh, four or $40,000 and, uh, and, and to do a big deal, um, you know, they may do a half million. But that's pretty big for an angel group, let's say in Fort Wayne. So. You know, most angel investors still um, forty thousand is probably the top end. Venture capital people, which there's not a whole lot in this area. There's more in Indianapolis, and still most of them are in the larger cities on the coast. You know, this is where a lot of those won't even look at anything under five million dollars. You know, they're not interested in investing in small projects. They're in, they're interested in putting a lot of money in and making a lot of money, right? So we're not even talking about those guys. Um, and typically, startup companies um, in seed funds will look at maybe, there's about 500,000 of those that were uh, started or funded by, um, by uh, angels and others, ones that, and these are all estimates, but ones funded by friends, family, and fools, uh, about 200,000, by angels, 35 to 50,000, and by VCs, less than 500. So as you can tell, venture capitals is really, you know, um, the big money for big companies, uh, be it the big size companies. So this is what, a, a typical process might be if you're going to in front of a what I call a professional investor like an angel um, now if you're going in front of your mom it's different right? says what do you need <laughs> and uh, I had actually had um, you know a, a guy come into my office and, and he was uh, a farmer and he wanted he had an idea for a project and he said well I don't really have any money but I need he said, can you get a hold of 5,000? I go, yeah, my parents, I can get my parents to give it to me maybe. I talked him into it, and he did. But they had to come along to our meeting, and the parents had to tell me, now you're going to have to watch him because he changes his mind all the time. He's, he gets from one project to the next, and he told me all his faults and everything. <laughs> so but, so there's, there's bad parts about getting your parents involved. But, you know, a, a general process of what it takes to present in front of a professional investor. In general, there's like a, a pre-screening process. So they look at they look at printed material or they're not talking to you yet. They're just looking at, um, okay, this is this deal, this is this deal. And generally, about one in four will make it to the next level. So still, it's only 25%, so your odds aren't very good. And then there's a, a screening and a due diligence process. Screening, again, is okay, these are the ones that I'm interested in. Maybe I've found 10 of them, you know, out of 40. Now, out of these 10, I want to get it down to about two or three, and that's the one in three make it to due diligence. What due diligence is, okay, let me check on all the facts. Okay, what do I know about these guys? Are, are they, what they saying in this little prospectus that they gave me, is it true? You know, what, what can I do to check up on the guys, the company, the team, and everything in there? So only one in three get by screening, and other only one in three uh, get to actually meet the person. So um, in the investment meeting, you know, when they've said, yeah, these guys look pretty good, then you're, this is where you're actually presenting it to them. So when they say presenting to angels, it's actually, it takes a lot just to get in front of somebody. Now in Fort Wayne, it's a little easier because there's there's not as many deals and there's not as many uh, 
people with good deals to present to investors. So, you know, if you've got a halfway decent idea with especially something behind it, um, you know, you got a pretty good chance of skipping these first ones and, and presenting. Um, so overall, if you take all these things, um, and that means you have a one in 72 chance, you know, of actually getting funded by an angel. And that's, again, these are all general things. You know, if you're in Silicon Valley, there's deals, you know, they look at thousands of deals, right? In Fort Wayne, they look at 10, <laughs> if they're lucky, and they just decide. So your odds of getting in front of somebody is, is a lot better here um, because there just aren't that many people uh, in, in Silicon Valley or you know a lot of other places, Austin, Texas, or other places. There's a more of a environment of entrepreneurism. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go big. I'm going to do this. So people are um, really starting companies all the time and trying to make them go big, and they know how to do it. They've, there's a whole. They see what this guy does and they do it. Um, one of the things we're trying to create at Fort Wayne is that same type of environment where, you know, you see somebody that, that you know do this and they got funded and they did this and said, well, I can do that. So the more that we get people being successful and actually getting funded and creating a successful business, you know, the better it is. Okay. Um, I just put this up and you probably, I don't know if you can't read it. Um, so what do when, when you talk about, you know, how to present to an angel, it's, it's really more about what your whole company and your deal is about than how good of a presenter you are or how you present it. Because most of them can see behind the fact that, you know, okay, this guy is uh, an awful presenter or he's a wonderful presenter. You know, it's not like really school where you get a grade on how well you present. It's more about the deal. And so what makes a good deal is more important in this presentation than, you know, how good of a presenter you are. Um, and the concept of ideas are just a multiplier of execution, which means, so if, if you want to say how important or how good is your idea to an uh, angel investor, you have to not only look at the idea, but look at the execution, which means how well have you done so far? Or in a previous company that you have, how good did you do? That's why a lot of people say the team is more important to most angel investors than the idea. Because they know, hey, the last company this guy had, he made $10 million for his investors. So I'm pretty sure that if he's got another idea, that it's going to be successful too. So what they say is, okay... From the concept from awful idea, weak idea, so so, all the way to brilliant idea, and the execution of no execution all the way to brilliant execution, you multiply the two together, and that's what it's worth to an angel investor. So if you have a, a weak idea, that's worth one. But if you can execute it brilliantly, that's worth $10 million. So, in other words, most people, the idea is not the most important thing, just as we were talking about earlier. Um, it's more about how, because if you get a weak idea, you can still make it better as you go along. But even if you have a brilliant idea, which is 20, and you have no execution, what's that worth? 20 bucks, right? Because you don't do anything with it. So um, the, the only negative one is if you have an awful idea, the more, the more you work and the more money you spend, it's a minus. You can spend a lot of money and not make anything about it. So, so, but the point of this is um, when, so if you just look at a, what do angel investors look for, or any investor, I mean, even, even your mom, <laughs> uh, you know, they really, it's more about can you do it and can you start in the process? And if you got a pretty good idea, that's great. And, you know, a lot of things people can say, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but it's going to change. I don't care what the idea is, it's going to change. It's going to change constantly by the time you get, you know, into the process. So just keep that in mind. And this is totally not readable, but I'll send you, uh, I, 
can I can put this online somewhere and, and email people this, but it really is what are angels looking for? And this is more important than, as I said, how you present it. Uh, because it's really three things. The business opportunity. You know, how can they make, uh, what, is, what is the idea that you have? You know, is it, does it give returning, returning, recurring revenue? Um, is it not a commodity product? In other words, do we have to sell it as cheap as we can? All, the, all these kind of things. Not in a declining market. Um, and the prospective entrepreneurs, again, this is the team. How strong are they? Have they done this before? Have they, have they got passion? You know, do, and, and again, there is some part of this that do I really like these people? Um, and the financial deal at the end is how much money am I going to make? How, is this, are they trying to create something that, uh, you know, they're not making a very good margin on and I don't know if I can make much money out of it. Um, most, you know, angels and investors, you know, they'll invest in 10 deals, right? Let's just say 10 deals and they expect that a high percentage of those are just going to go bust. They're not going to make any money of that. And maybe only one or two of them are going to make it. Well, in order for all that numbers to work out, they've got to make a lot of money off of those one to two, right? So they're not looking to double their money. You know, they're looking to make five to ten times their money or more. And they're not looking to wait ten years to get it back. You know, they'll grow too old. And there's too many things that can go wrong. So, you know, they're maybe looking at three years, five years. Uh, maybe if they're really long, seven years. But usually, you know, three to five years. And a lot of them are looking more like, can I get 15 times my money out of it? So, it, it, in that case, it's can you, are you going to sell out? Or are you going to do a IPO? Or are you going to do this, you know? So, if you've got this idea that, there's no big way to exit for them, in other words, to get a lot of money back. It's going to be hard for them to say, yeah, I'm going to do this. Because there's, again, they have to pick deals that they can potentially make a lot of money. Because only 10 to 20 percent maybe will make it, right? So that's what you have to think. You have to think about all these things and give investors what they're looking for. So. The, I just put this up, and I'm not really going to talk about it, but a, a lot of, uh, they call, there's a lot of different variations of what they call the pitch deck, which is, here's my slides, right? And it could be not slides at all, but just you talking about it. But um, it's really, uh, some of them only have half this many slides. Some of them have like five or six. Uh, and, and five or six slides, you know, you have to convince the person that this is a great idea. And I said, what's the vision? Your elevator pitch, you know, in you know, 10 seconds, here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to do. How much traction have you got? Yes, I've done this, I've got it out there, I've sold 50 of them, people love it, now they're ordering more. And what the market opportunity is, you know, I can go out and sell to this guy's, this guy's, this guy's, we could make ten billion dollars, you know, in the next year. So I mean, you've seen Shark Tank, right? <laughs> Everybody that comes to my office says, I saw it. it's just like Shark Tank. And it is, actually. I mean, a lot of this, you're presenting to somebody, and they ask the same kind of questions um, like Shark Tank does. Not that Shark Tank has billionaires sitting there, but um, it's, it's uh, they look at the same kind of things. How much traction do you have? You know, what have, what have you done before? You know, and, and how, much, how much is it going to cost you? What are their risks? The risk, the risk um, is something that, you know, you got to really uh, think about because that's what they're thinking about. What's my risk here? You know, how can I lose money? Okay, we're almost done. This is um, a few presentation tips. So um, the first thing is if you're presenting to anybody really about an investment, in your company, it's always good to get introductions first. What I mean by that is, um, if you come and none of those people that you're presenting to know you, you're at a real disadvantage. But if if you have a friend that knows this investor, and you can have this friend say, "Hey, I got somebody that's got a really good idea. Talk to him." It's just like the same like getting a job, right? If you know if you know somebody, 
it's it's ten times easier, and so it just it just makes it uh, a little easier for an investor to feel comfortable with you. Uh, the second thing is the story is really important. The story of why this product is going to sell, or you know, I started here, and if you just present numbers and it's hard to get an emotional connection with these people to really feel um, that they should buy from you. So the story, creating a story that says this is why people are going to buy it, you know, and why there's going to be a big need is important. Now, a lot of people forget to ask for the money. They, just, they say, you know, okay, if, again, if you're watching Shark Tank, they have to do that at the beginning all the time. You know, I'm, I'm asking for $50,000 for 10% of my company. Um, but ask, <laughs> because they, if, if you give a presentation and they say, well, that's great, but what are you looking for? What, do I, what do you want from us? What do you want? Here's what I'm looking for, and here, here's what I'm willing to give up. Um, PDF your deck if you're giving us a <coughs> Have something to hand out, because most of them will write all over it and then take it with them. And a lot of decisions may aren't made right away. And then just uh, continually update it as you give other presentations. So those are just a, a real uh, quick uh, synopsis. And, and then everything is general. Here in Fort Wayne, you know, there's, there's, different, uh, there's some different groups that have investors come and present all the time. Some of them, some of them do it at, uh, they meet at uh, Greater Fort Wayne, Inc. Um, once a month or so. Uh, and they have a couple, at least a couple, three or four companies that come and present each time. And there's other investor groups that meet in different places. One thing that's important to know also is that people usually like to invest in things they know. So if, if one person is uh, knows all about the medical field, they'll like to invest in medical stuff. So you need to find out what this angel or what this investor what is, what he likes to invest in? He'll go, I mean, people, you just ask him, and you go, well, I like medical and I like um, railroad things or whatever. And I, I usually like, my sweet spot is between 50 and $200,000. And and this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. You know, all you gotta do is ask. And so it's, it's just important to find out what people are looking for. I mean, I've given presentations asking for a million dollars before to people on, spend an hour answering all their questions, and they say, well, yeah, but that's not really what I usually like to invest in. So if it's usually not what they usually like to invest in, they probably won't. So, well, um, that's my presentation. And again, it's all, there's a lot of generalities in here, and, <laughs> you know, um, it, the rules kind of work uh, not just for angels, but for other types of investors, too. Um, so... If you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them, like, right now. Um, I, I think I'm pretty much out of time, right? Or, um, I might, well, let's see. There was another show. Well, I won't go to that one. I'll just, I'll just say that um, there's a lot of ways to get money other than doing investing to, in front of professional investors, you know. And um, I mentioned a little bit that the environment's changed from, okay, I'm going to give you a half million dollars. That's almost impossible to get anymore. Or even a couple hundred thousand. A lot of people like to start smaller. All right, I'll give you 50,000. Get this done in th three months, six months. If you can get that done and prove to me that you can do this, I'll give you 200,000. And if you can do that, I'll give you five hundred thousand um, because of, because of the risk. If it's less risky for them, yeah. I mean, most of these investors you're speaking of are they the ones who are, you know, part of the company for entirety, or do they just get a percentage, or how does that work with them? There's a lot of ways deal can can be done. Um, I mean, equity investments mean you know they I'll give you whatever amount of money, and you'll give me a percentage of the company. The problem with that for an investor is they don't make any money until you sell the company or you buy them out somehow 
And sometimes there's clauses where you say, okay, after so long, you have to buy them out. Or, you know, or there's an initial public offering and they make a lot of money. Other uh, types of deals can be like convertible debentures where um, it can turn into equity or you can buy them out over a series of time. Um, you can pay them a, a percentage of your profits. Uh, you can, and you can just, you can just start that way. In other words, you're not giving them any equity. All you're doing is paying them 10% of what you sell the whole time. So it's almost like a, a more of a loan than anything else. But there's, it's better than, if you go to a bank, you got to start paying them right away, no matter what. <laughs> you know, you don't, they don't take a percentage of your sales. They take money every month. So an investor is taking a risk. Obviously, he's making more money, but there's just there are a lot of ways um, that it can be done and that you can get paid back and investors can get paid back. Yeah. I was just going to add to it because um, I've been through my experiences. You know, one of the hardest things to get people to see is your vision. You know, what you're trying to build. You know, so a lot of times it's not even necessary. It's, it's the trust. You know, they have to trust you but it's not even, the money sometimes is not even the issue. It's more like you said earlier, you know, some people, some of them people have kind of been through it, and you got to be authentic. You know, because people, they can see through you. You know, they see that you don't have that passion, or, you know, you don't have that history, mm -hmm. or somebody can vouch for you who, who do have that, who do have that history. <clears throat> then it's almost a no every time, because they have nothing to lean on. Uh, well, passion, yeah, I mean, passion is really important. I mean, if you, if they don't, they don't see you have passion, or if they say, well, I'm doing this part-time, I'm, I'm, you know, I got this other thing going, and this is thing to, you know, it's going to be hard for somebody to invest, and um, at the same time, if they don't, if they can't see the whole thing, and, and you said, well, they got to trust you, you know, that's, that just doesn't happen very often. You know, trust me, I'll get you the money. Um, right. You know, they really have to know exactly right. Right. what this is going to do and see in their head. You know, um, they'll, I mean, their whole goal is to reduce risk, reduce their risk, right? Okay, I don't want to lose money in this. How can I not lose money in this? And so, you know, trusting you is, unless you've done a lot of other deals and created companies where you've done it before, then you've kind of earned the trust, right? Um, but if you haven't done it before and you can't really show that you have a lot of bit, you know, tr the trust me, I can do it, I know I can, usually doesn't fly, right? Well, I mean, like I said, you know, some people, when they get out in the world, they, they, they talk a certain kind of way. But when they're at home, they talk a different kind of way. But when I learned, you got to, I talk to my wife the same way I talk to you, trying to get her to see my vision. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm talking to her one way, and then I step into the world, and my whole yeah. personality has changed. You know, and I think that's, a, that's something that a lot of people have issues and problems with, because they talk to Cousin Bubba one way, and then you try to flip it, but it's not real. Yeah, I mean, you know, being authentic is the best thing you could do, right? Yeah. I mean, showing your own personality and... Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, you're right. I mean, people can see through. I mean, this guy just sounds phony. <laughs> or he's trying to sell me a bill of goods, yeah. and I don't believe it. So, yeah, right. I mean, uh, it's it's important to talk about. That's why it's important to talk about all the bad things, you know, and the risks to investors to say, hey, I know that here's the things that could happen. Because, you know, a lot of people say, I'm not going to say any bad, or I'm not going to talk about my competitors, or I'm not going to talk about this. But, you know, the more you talk about, here, I've looked at this, and here's all the bad things that could happen, mm -hmm. and here's how I'm going to fix it, then, you know, they don't have to start thinking about what are all the bad things that can happen. I, they get a good feeling that you're already thinking about it and, and coming up with plans to not make it happen, right? Or to, to if that happens, I'm going to do this, and we're still going to be going. I am Devin Wright. And I'm Bryce Moore. Um, what, I, what I love about Minds of Powerful People, I love the, the energy first. And I love that it's, it's so natural. It's, it's from the heart. It's, 
is real and you know if it's to be it, it's up to us to, to really change the way the world is and if we don't have change first with ourselves then you know never anything is going to happen and um a little bit by myself i'm a musician i am the founder of right times entertainment well right times inc entertainment we, we do anything from recording performing we ground level right now but we will be big as well as um, I'm an independent marketing director and just coming to these classes every month and just meeting new people and just you know sharing the knowledge getting that energy is like priceless um oh um Les Brown once said if you don't work on what you like to do what you do not like to do will take over so I believe that minds of powerful people encourages people to continue to work on what we love to do, find our passions, find our true visions. Um, I'm a representative of Varsity Rep, and uh, I'm also an instructor, a uh, barber instructor at the uh, Ravenscroft Beauty College here in Fort Wayne. Um, and uh, I just have, I have to be an encouragement to uh, individuals because some people don't know what encouragement is. So for those who don't know, minds of powerful people can definitely show you. I mean, yeah. we, we we meet so many great individuals, and and they have so many so much knowledge to give us that if we don't utilize it, then what we don't want will continue to happen. Devon, tell us a little bit about uh, your background and your history, and what inspired you to start something like Minds of Powerful People. Well, I mean, if you look at the demographic of you know people that come from where I come from, you know. It's always the the negatives. It's always uh, something that keeps them from expanding or growing or, or doing things that uh, could change their entire lives. You know, so I wanted to be that guy who uh, found a way out of it and was able to pull a lot of people with me. And I think that a lot of people just need uh, a platform, you know, uh, something of that nature that gives them the opportunity. You know, a lot of people don't understand when you get you know, when you have hard work and dedication, and that meets opportunity, success comes. Now, I'm not saying you got to be $100 million man or a woman, but it's, um, it's going to be a, a, a lot of positive things that's going to come out of it and more than likely result in some, some good money that's going to be, that's going to far exceed just being able to take care of your family, you know. So, uh, I was able to see that at a young age, regardless of, um, you know, uh, brother, losing my brother and uh, different experiences in life that I went through, you know. Um, and I think when you go through a lot of things in life, you know, you actually have, um, I think you go through trials and tribulations to become a better person. You know, so I kind of looked at what I went through, and I still do. I look at a lot of things that I go through as something that's, that's come in my path to make me a better person to be able to help somebody else. You know, I got sons that look up to me. You know, I believe that all people have um, potential that even themselves can't even see. And sometimes they need somebody else to help pull the best of them out of them. And that's what Minds of Powerful People is all about. Just really letting people know who they really are. You are a powerful person. You just have to have the best of you developed and, and brought out of you. You know, and I mean, to be honest, I have to just give all glory to God because I'm just a person who have that passion to see other people grow. And everybody don't think that way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of great leaders in the world. Me, myself, I don't compare myself or uh, try to be somebody I'm not. I just focus on, um, you know, continuing to, to build on a platform that's going to give people the best opportunity to uh, reach their full potential. That's what it's all about. Devon, we know what value Minds of Powerful People brings uh, the family members, the people who are participating, they're attending these meetings. But what do you see the value Minds of Powerful People brings to the community of Fort Wayne and other communities that may have similar organizations? I believe that there should be something like Minds of Powerful People in every single city in America because, you know, entrepreneurs create jobs. You know, that's what they do for the community. I think a lot of times, um, you know, I think about how tough it is being an entrepreneur sometimes because you go through phases of working but not reaping the benefits. You know, you don't necessarily make profit immediately. But I think that all entrepreneurs should have somewhere they can go to actually get the money to build the great things that they have in their hearts. And that's why we got Eagles Area that's actually a part of um, 
The Mob Family, which is something similar to one of my favorite shows, Shark Tank. You know, because everybody knows about angel investors or mm-hmm. being able to go to somebody who have the money. You know, and and, a, and another thing, and I know I'm kind of jumping around. Um, I, I kind of answered that, right? Mm-hmm. I think that what I love to teach. One of my favorite things is to show people that when you have bulk income, or money that comes in that's um, as uh, an addition to what you what you pay your bills with. You know, like tax refunds. Um, you know, child support checks. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. You know, um, you know any any type of funding or assistance, uh, bank loans, credit cards, um, school checks. Mm-hmm. You know. If people actually know how to put those, put that, put that kind of money into, um, you know, things that's going to be actually constructive and effective in a positive way in their lives, then they'll see more progression. But most people are ignorant to where to put their money and how, mm-hmm. because a lot of people are, or have come from situations in their life where they lacked. So the first thing people think about when they get that kind of money is, oh, I need what I'm gonna do to my car. Or, mm-hmm get a new car or, you know, get more entertainment for the house and the family. And although there's nothing wrong with those things, it's just all those things are things that will come at a more abundant level if you actually build your finances and put your money towards things that's going to um, help your business grow or even to get ahead on your bills, you know. It's looking at the big picture versus the quick ticket items. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Investing versus and, and I think that that's something good with MOP because that's some of the things we focus on. We don't just focus on um, having networking groups or having people come together. We want people to actually have relationships, mm-hmm. you know, um, and also to be able to um, understand, understand how to um, connect with people because they don't. You know, passing a business card is one thing, but actually having somebody who can take you to the investors or or willing to take you to the investors or someone who can partner with you and y'all can make things happen even without money. You know, there's so many things that you can do, you know, with a person besides try to get your next sale off of them, you know, or hand them a business card and never talk to them for five or six years or see them at networking meetings. You know, I think that having a a developed relationship with them and actually bringing value to them as well as them bringing value to you, that's what business is all about. And I think those kind of teachings, you know, et cetera, is what separates MOP from a lot of other organizations. The classroom setting that actually shows them the reality of business and actually giving them the opportunity and the connections to the the, uh, the capital. Good? Good. Yeah. Yeah.